Hi everyone, Liz here. Thanks for stopping by. So today I have a little PR package and I've had a bit of a squish through it. I've not opened it yet, but I believe it's from VIPCrossStitch.com. So something again, a little bit different for me, but we'll have a look and see what we've got. They had some very interesting items on the website. Let's have a look. Okay. They do cross stitch, but they also do other kits as well. And I saw this one and this one. So what shall we have a look at first? Let's have a look at the big one first. That looks most interesting. Uh, feeling the uh, through the packet to the little uh, frame inside there. That's how I knew what it was. And I believe this is like the punch needle kits. And um, they actually call it poke embroidery so this one would be 11 pounds and 78 pence and as i say it's from vip cross stitch down below i've not paid for them they have sent me them to review on my channel uh, free of charge uh, at the moment there is a valentine special on and there's up to 15 percent off on the site um there's another banner that says something about a five percent off site wide and then at the top of the website if you want to go and check them out there's buy four and get one free uh, and then i think it's possibly just for the us free shipping over 69 dollars so there's all sorts of offers going on a lot of these companies do have all these different offers so let's have a look in this Very crinkly back there. Right. Okay, so we have a lovely little easel stand there. Wow. And it's got um, like a brass screw and uh, a turn there. So I'll take this out of the packet. Never mind faffing about this. Let's have a look at this properly. Let's get this out and have a look. You know, if it's the same thing that I'm thinking of, it's years since I did a punch needle. Um, there was a company that brought them out, possibly called Punch Needle, I honestly can't remember. But it must be 25, 30 years ago um, since I last uh, had a go at doing this. And there were all the different walls and... Oh, gosh, this doesn't want to come out of here. Goodness me, you need to give it some welly. Oh, blimey. Well and truly packaged. So, yes, yeah, so you've got a little easel to stand your project on. Hey, that's brilliant. I mean, to be fair, you could use it for anything, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, for putting a little project on there. Brilliant, like that. Okay, excuse me. Um, I'm just doing an opening of a little, I think this is a Shiba Inu dog. A little uh, Japanese Shiba Inu dog there smiling at you. And I've got a little Scotty dog. Hey, things are coming in the bedroom. Wanting to come in. Yeah, we have just been joined by uh, Millie Moo. She must have known that I had another dog in the house. What can I say? So yeah, that's brilliant. But I mean, you could use it for any little picture or anything to go on your desk or your mantelpiece or whatever. Really nice quality that as well. There's no rough edges or anything on it. You know, it's uh, been finished off really nicely. Let's do a quick measure. I'd like to know how big these things are. Okay, so this one is it's probably easier to measure it from the back, Liz, where it's flat at uh, nine inches, which is 23 centimetres. So a nice little size. And the little ledge, which again is the widest part, is 18, in, uh, 18 centimetres, which is just slightly over seven inches. So that's your little stand there i just thought cross stitch isn't something that i've done and i'm not sure on my eyesight being able to give it justice to be able to do reviews on cross stitch but i thought well they do other things as well so let's have a look and this looks really really good so this is going to be your punch needle tool okay and we have the instructions oh right okay 
that's fine so it's uh, saying there use the d gear to punch punch small color blocks first yep so that's good so it's in possibly chinese japanese and then it's also telling you um in english as well which is brilliant and we've got a qr code there so i might scan that and have a look but i just thought that was a really cute little picture if it have had a scotty of course it would have been a scotty we have a nice hoop which again you can either do this picture on and leave it in um, which I think they did on the website, they were like showing it stood on the stand in the uh, frame. Or let me just see if this will come out. Will it come out? Will it come out? It's a plastic frame. Yeah, it's your em well, hope it's your embroidery hoop, isn't it? Oh, I see. All right, it's got gosh, it is a long time since I've played with embroidery hoops. It has got like a ridge there that uh, your other hoop fits into so that it's really going to grip your material which is good and then again a nice little brass screw for tightening or relaxing at the top and this one is let me have a look it is 20 well about 19 and a half 19 and three quarter centimeters by seven and three quarter inches so just under 20 well actually it'll be the picture inside won't it that you'll need to see so let me just have a look let me measure the inside so yeah the inside measurement is 18 centimeters which is seven inches so that's quite a nice size there to go on there and uh, we'll have a look at the needle in a moment let's see what we've got in here there's certainly plenty of wool in this okay Okay, so we've got your lovely dark blue, which is for your background there. And then we've got your Sheba dog, Sheba and you dog, which is his top and his front. And then a little bit of the white, which is your creamy bits. And then we have for his collar and for his eyes and his nose. So oh, this is going to be fun to do. And it looks like this is printed out as well. Okay, right. Okay. And we have oh some snips. Wow, some metal snips. Okay, how do we get into these? There it is. These are really good as well if you've got dexterity problems. I mean, they're great for sewing. I've got quite a few pairs, not quite like this. Um, these look a bit more lethal than the ones I've got but yeah you don't need to be putting fingers through um, scissors or anything you know you're not having to put any pressure on your fingers you are just literally snipping doing that uh, snipping action so yeah brilliant and then we have a needle threader which are always handy and a plastic needle so possibly this is for doing the embroidery for the mouth possibly maybe it won't punch needle that I'll have to see as I say, I'm probably gonna have to look some of this up how to do it but basically to thread your needle right so you put your needle thread I see if you can see me doing this you put your needle thread of the metal bit through the eye of the needle and this works on all size needles all size threads put your thread through there without splitting it just make that a little bit wider I'm trying to do this so you can see it I wonder if I put my white piece of paper underneath you might see better right so that I'm trying to not to get these shadows so yeah so you put your thread through the wire that's through the needle and pull that through there and then when you pull this out, it pulls your thread through your needle. So you now have, oops, take that out, a threaded needle, and you're ready to go. I've been using these for years. I've still got some of the old like metal ones. Um, you used to get them in little sewing kits and things. If you can just see the metal end here, it's just about showing, I think. There, so that's your needle and threader which you can never have in a, enough of these and um, if you try using too thick a thread or try pulling it too um, quickly through your needle you can actually pull these out 
So you, you can never have too many of those. All right, so get rid of those bits. I've got those over there. So those are really, wow, quite lethal looking zippers. Okay. And then let's have a look at this punch needle. This is very, very different to the one that I used to use. Uh, yeah, it's got a lot more different bits on it. Mine was just a case of you either punched it or you didn't, I think. Is this going to open here? Oh, no, it opens at the back. Look. That's it. It looks like a cat, actually, that, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, it looks uh, like a cat with little rosy cheeks rather than uh, that's the eyes and that's the eyebrows. <laughs> I suppose you could turn it into a cat. Okay, so I used to have one and it had like a thing that went across the top. Looks like this now, you just put the thread across here. Mine had like a, a spool holder that you put there and as it came through the pen, um, it would actually then just thread through so I'm going to have to work out how to use this. If you want me um, to do a video showing doing this, then I can have a go. Uh, I say it's a long time since I've done it. Yeah, you, you've got your different uh, settings there as to how deep you put it. That's the really longest one, the deepest that it'll go. That's the next one. So you've got four different settings. Wow. Uh, that one, you just literally pushing the end in and putting it to these little marks here, these little grooves, so that it goes different ways. That's like the shortest one. Okay, and then what you would do, now as far as I know, the needle, does that thread all the way through there then? Ah, yeah. So what you're gonna do is put your thread, again, through there. Try not to uh, tangle this up too much. I don't really want to undo any thread because I know I'll never get it back again. Let's see if I've got a bit longer one. Oh, this one's okay. So, yeah, so what you will do is put your thread through there. So you've got that. And then you're going to pull it all the way up through your pen thing there and hold that there. And then you literally go in and punch down and make a loop and then go into the next hole and make a loop. And you, you basically, you can make your loops as large or as small as you want, if you can see that. And you're making a fluffy picture. I don't know whether you've ever seen those, like, um, what are they called? Like the wool mats and things that you can do. Um, and you're just going to go around and stab into each one. I mean, I'm just doing this roughly as we're going along there, but it just literally threads through. And I would think actually you'd probably do it the other way around. No, you don't. You have the, the loops on the top. I really must get back into this and have a look. But yeah, but in the end, once you've actually gone round and done all your blue bits, so you'll see it on the back as well, then you will end up with your picture. Um, yeah, you can see they've not got them quite as long. It does need to be on your frame as well. It is easier on your frame rather than <laughs> trying to do it in midair, but it was just a bit easier to show you. And if you do make a mistake, then literally all you do is just pull it out and start again. So I'm quite looking forward to having a go at this. It's a long time, as I say, since I've done any. And then to thread your needle again, you just put your wire back through to your needle tip. So I think the ones that I used to uh, do, yeah, the wire's come back through that way again. I've got the wire at the end. The ones I used to do were a lot thinner threads. They were more like embroidery threads rather than the wool. So this will probably do a lot quicker because it's thicker. But also, as I say, they had like a holder on the end that you actually put the thread on the end and it just literally went along. So with these, you're gonna to have to be careful like with knitting or crocheting um, as to where your thread goes. Uh, so you don't have it rolling all over or get the dog running after it. But yeah, I'm quite impressed with that. That's quite uh, a nice tool. As I say, the one I had, you certainly didn't have four different uh, settings for it. It was, uh, yeah. Okay, but yeah, let me know if you want me to uh, 
show you how to do this so we'll work through it together and how to do this then i'm quite happy to do that there's something a bit different to do on uh, the channel so pop that away okay let me get these bits tidied up and i'll show you the other item that i got okay i'm back all right it's got a little bit brighter so i've turned the light off so fingers crossed we might be okay with the shadows but let's have a look at this so this is i believe a little um, beaded cross stitch keychain so we'll have a look and see what we get in this packet okay so i'm not uh, particularly a cross stitcher i have done um beaded embroidery i've done bits of um what i really used to enjoy was actually like embroidering ribbons to make flowers i've done quite a bit of that in the past So this is something a little bit different and um, we've got our little wad in there so i think it's going to be a padded little animal let me just have a look at this i can't show you the pattern inside um the manufacturers don't like you to do that and the people who make the patterns because people can freeze the screen and take the pattern off your screen off your um your computer screen or your tablet whatever screen um to get the pattern free of charge so they don't like you to uh, show the pattern but uh, yes yeah, so this is um the different animals that there are and i believe i ordered the little monkey one so we'll have a look at that one yet yeah, it shows you front and back okay so it's all in a nice little packet let's see let's see Okay, so it looks like we have the little key ring part there. Oh, let's show you the monkey first, look. So this is, the <laughs> so it's a printed uh, cross stitch and it's on Ada fabric. And let's see how many counts it is. There's nothing to tell me what count it is on the packet. I don't think, no. So if you measure an inch, so that's, oops, sorry, you're not going to be able to see this very well because I'm having to put it down here to see it myself. And it's however many little holes there are per inch. So it's like um, stitches per inch. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So this is a 14 count um, or a 14 stitch shader. Um, so yeah. It just reminds me of school, to be fair, when we used to do uh, little cross-stitch projects and you had all the little holes. Obviously, the bigger the holes, um, then the easier they are to do, the easier they are to see. You can go right into the 20s, I think, which, which will be really tiny. And then, of course, you can do your different cloths and things as well. The really clever cross-stitchers go on to various cloths. Um, and, yeah, I really admire them. As I say, my eyesight isn't really good enough to do anything like that anymore so yeah that's uh, it does look a bit like a mouse really doesn't it but it looks like we've got a chinese symbol on the back um i'm sorry i don't know what that says if you do let me know in the comments down below uh you may be able to read it for me but uh, yeah it looks quite a happy little chap as i got it for as a monkey because hubby does like monkeys and um, we have just started chinese new year I'm not sure which uh, new year it is though so happy chinese new year to everybody um and i do apologize because i'm not sure what animal it is i know the year i was born i would be a horse it's <laughs> probably why i've got such long legs <laughs> okay so i'm not going to take these out because there are needles in here and we have got your um tapestry needles which I believe so yeah so the tapestry needles which are blunt on the ends rather than having the point on the ends so you're not going to split your fabric and yeah so I believe anyway it's as I say it's a long time since I've done any sewing and your little key ring there so we've got four needles so have we got four different colors let me have a look which would be handy yep so we've got your four different uh, embroidery threads there with no dmc numbers with these um so we've got what your white your red your black and your brown 
So your black and your white are obviously going to be uh, a 310 and B5200, um, which are probably about the only ones I know. The red may be 666 and I don't know about the brown. It's like a chestnutty brown. Um, DMC is like the embroidery uh, company, one of the main, if not the main embroidery company. And they put a number on all of their colours and that crosses over into diamond painting. So you get uh, the same colours, the same colour numbers on threads for DMC threads are the same colour numbers for your diamonds on your diamond paintings. So it took me a while to uh, get my head around that when I first started diamond painting. I used to see all these numbers and think, what are they? What are they? But yeah, if you're a cross stitcher, then you will probably know. It looks like we've also got, <laughs> which you probably can't see, uh, some invisible thread. Um, yeah, there is a thread sort of here running through. So I'm wondering if once we've done the uh, embroidery and the cross stitch, that's your little beads here, um, if we then actually sew him up, um, because obviously we're going to have to, we're going to have to cut him out. Yeah, I suppose you could do it actually as a square. Um, so rather than cutting it out all the way around and uh, I don't quite know how they've done the tail oh I see that's how they've done the tail look they've just sort of gone round it I was going to say you're going to have an awful job cutting that tail out so you can either cut it out as a shape and sew them together and then put your wadding inside or if you're not too confident at cutting it out there's nothing to stop you just literally folding it in half um, and just having it as like a little square key ring. Um, you don't even need to use the wadding, to be fair. If you get one of those little um, Perspex key rings, it would possibly fit in one of those. But yeah, you could just blanket stitch around your edges with your invisible thread, which I can't see because it's disappeared. <laughs> um, just probably cut to make it a little bit more square, take the black edges off. Um, yeah, I mean, you could even just cut it in a little bit uh, nearer to that if you wanted to but yeah so there's a couple of ways of doing that um, I'm not quite sure how I will do it I don't know whether I'll cut it out and make it really small and then obviously you've got to attach um, your keyring as well which probably you would use your invisible thread for that it's like um, sort of a fishing wire type effect so I don't think you're gonna you may get it just oh yeah you can just sort of catch it there it is quite a thin one as well so yeah it tends to be a lot stronger thread um it's very sort of nylony so you tend to get a bit more pull on it you've just got to be careful when you're finishing off um it can tend to slip and come undone itself because it's not as pliable as like your cottons and your silks and things okay oh right so let's have a look at these uh, little beads. So they all have a little hole in the middle of them. And they're not quite as small as uh, peyote beads, anybody that does beading. Um, but they are a very small bead. So you've got your red, your black, your white and your brown, all to match your threads, which is nice. So you would just literally, as you're doing your stitch, you would then sew the little bead on. With each stitch you will sew a bead. So you'll end up with a little beaded animal. Um, quite a cute little kit, really. Something to get started on. Uh, possibly for a beginner. You know, somebody that's just wanting to dabble. I mean, you don't have to put the beads on if you don't want to. You could just literally do it as a little cross-stitch project. And uh, just use your threads. But, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, quite good. So... Right, so that's quite a nice little haul, a couple of uh, different little kits there to show you. We had our little Shiba Inu uh, punch needle kit, or poke needle as uh, VIP cross stitch call it, and then our little beaded embroidery. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed looking at these with me. If you have, if you can give me a thumbs up, that would be much appreciated. If you've got any questions or comments, then if you pop them in the comment section down below, I'll answer them as best as I can. And a big thank you to VIP Cross Stitch for sending me these um, to have a look at and to show everybody. 
And if you want to come back and possibly see these being done or see what I get up to next, then if you press that subscribe button and the little bell next to it, you'll be notified when all my videos come up. So thanks ever so much for stopping by and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye for now.